This is a demonstration of the new upper enclosure control and display cards shown working with all the existing lower enclosure cards. As seen in my last video, the lower enclosure contains the five cards completed so far, which fill the lower left bay of the enclosure. Three cards form the computer's ALU, and then the remaining two provide the four registers A through to D. Starting from the right, we have the logic card, arithmetic card, control card, B, C register, and finally the A, D register card. Each card has the appropriate status LEDs down the front, and starting with the logic card, we have LEDs for each of the five 8-bit results produced. Next, on the arithmetic card, we have the 8-bit add or increment result with carry-in and carry-out LEDs. On the control card, we have the 3 to 8 function decoder input output on the left, and then the condition register status on the right. On the BC register, we have the B status on the left and C status on the right, and finally the AD register card has the A status on the left and D status on the right. Moving up from here, over to the upper enclosure, we find the primary control switches. The left set of switches act as a read-only 8-bit register, which can then be gated onto the data bus. Moving along from there, we have various control switches, which are all unconnected for now, but will come into use later as other parts of the computer are constructed. Effectively though, these will eventually control the computer clock and allow loading and viewing of values in memory. Above the primary switches there are two display cards, display A on the left and display B on the right. The left hand display A shows the state of the computer's various control lines. Each block on this card is a tactile switch so that as well as displaying the state of a particular line, the user can, when the computer is placed in a special diagnostic mode, manually control the line. The upper left set of eight switches show and control the loading and selecting of registers A through to D. The lower set of seven switches directly control the ALU operation lines, and finally the two green switches above those operate the data switches and the address switch select lines. The data switch select line gates the primary switches below onto the data bus, while the address switch select line will gate the same switches onto the address bus. For now, I've temporarily wired the address switch select button to the condition register load line so that during this demonstration I can load the condition register while operating the ALU. Display B on the right shows the status of the computer buses and ALU, and as with display A, this card will be added to over time. The data bus is displayed on the bottom right of the card, and the three bits of the condition register are shown to the left. Middle right of the card is the ALU display, which shows a current active operation along with associated function code. In this demonstration, the function code segments won't actually be lit, as I'll be driving the operation control lines directly via display A. Finally on this card is an ammeter at the top left, which displays the amount of current being consumed by the computer. Moving around to the back of the upper enclosure, we can see the supports that the various cards and switches are mounted on, and all the internal wiring. On the rear of display card B, power comes in on the left crocodile clip from the bench power supply, which then passes through the ammeter and is then distributed around the computer via the three mini croc clips. Each of the display units is wired out to a single ribbon cable, which then goes back to the wire outboard, which we'll see in a moment. Display A on the right similarly has each bank of switches wired out over two ribbon cables, which also heads out to the wire outboard. Below display A is the wire outboard itself, which takes the ribbon cables from both displays and wires out each of the individual control lines over to the appropriate buses of the computer. Additionally on this board, power and ground are temporarily hooked up via croc cables, and there is also two temporary wire links which hook the condition register load line to the address switch select button on display A, and the data switch select line to the data select switch button also on display A. Immediately below the wire out card is the auxiliary control card. As with other cards in the upper enclosure, this will be added to over time, but for now holds the relays that gates the primary data switches on the enclosure front over to the data or address bus. There are two tactile switches here that allow the gating relays to be tested independently of the primary switches when required. Over in the left-hand side of the enclosure, 
all the ground crock clip cables come together and head off back to the bench power supply. Again, this is all a temporary measure and eventually there will be a proper power distribution system in place and when the computer is nearing completion, this half of the enclosure will also house an internal power supply. That's pretty much it for the computer as it currently stands. I'll now run through a quick demonstration of controlling the computer via display A and then I'll rerun the example I introduced in my last video where I'll perform an arithmetic sequence. I'll start with switching the power supply on. And as always, the computer starts off with all bits of the ALU not output set on. I'll now set an off on, off on pattern on the primary data switches and then select that value onto the data bus and load it into registers A and B. I can now swap to an off, off, on, on pattern and likewise load that value into the C and D registers. With that done, I'll now run through each of the LU operations, loading the condition register each time. As you can see, each result appears on the data bus as shown in the lower right of display B. Next, I'll demonstrate copying values between registers by selecting D and loading B, and then selecting A and loading C, effectively flipping over the patterns I loaded into the registers B and C earlier. I can now clear each of the registers by loading the empty data bus into them and then that's pretty much everything the display card is currently capable of. In my last video I introduced a simple arithmetic sequence which I manually walked through on the computer. Now I have the new display cards I'll be able to run through the same sequence but with greater ease as I can now use the switches on display A rather than the fiddly dip switches from before. Just to recap, the arithmetic sequence is 2 plus 4 plus 1 all multiplied by 3 and then with 3 subtracted from that. As before, we can break this down to a series of steps that we can perform on the computer to complete this particular arithmetic sequence. Here again are the same mnemonics I introduced in my last video. Eventually, just like any other computer, you'll be able to load a program into memory that can be executed without any further input from the user. For now though, we'll have to take each step at a time by hand and manipulate the computer's control lines manually according to what operation each mnemonic describes. Those out there familiar with assembly language will probably recognise most of these mnemonics as they're reasonably standard but I go into a bit more depth of how this sequence is derived in my previous video. I'll shut up for a bit now and get on with stepping through each of the steps required to perform this particular arithmetic sequence.
And there we go. The expected result of 18 is shown loaded into the A register, and as long as I keep my finger on the ALU Add button, it's also shown on the data bus. So that's all for now. On the personal front, I'm now in the process of moving house, which will mean two things. Firstly, it's going to be a short while before I do any further construction on the computer. Although, that said, I'll be busy creating designs for the next set of cards in the meanwhile. Secondly, this is the last video that will feature the breakfast bar I've been using as a makeshift workshop until now. There's a nice small room at the back of the new place that's got Paul's workshop written all over it, and so, all being well, the next video will be shot in there. I'm going to start moving the computer on now, so that it can perform simple programs without manual input, but this will be a big jump as I'll need to construct initial cards for the clock, sequencer, decoder and controller. As always, I'll be posting progress on my blog at relaycomputer.blogspot.co.uk, so please do take a look and I'll no doubt put together a new video on here as soon as there's something interesting to show.